Hey, what's going on everybody? Jim here. Um, been playing a lot of Elden Ring lately and uh, got into the DLC, but I did not want to give anything away from what I've been doing in the DLC because then a lot of people haven't played it as much. So we're back in the vanilla game, but I wanted to talk about my build. And the reason why is I have seen a lot of guides lately of showing off these ridiculous spells or ridiculous high uh, intensity attacks where you got to roll around and do perfect dodging and rolling and sweeping and spamming these things and it's a little too high paced for me. Um, I'm much more of a methodical Souls player and I suspect a lot of you guys might be as well which is why I wanted to put this video out there because I wanted to um, show that there are other ways to play. Now, some people might look at this build and think it's just very basic and boring because I have a giant shield and a giant weapon. You'll notice that I don't have much mana at all. Um, it's because I'm not really playing this, probably the same game as a lot of these high intensity streamers are. I'm playing much more slowly and methodically and I'm using the best resource in this game, which is stamina to my advantage. The reason why stamina is the best resource in the game is it is the only resource in the game that recharges on its own. You don't have to do anything for your stamina to come back. Now granted, in certain boss fights, you may find that your stamina depletes a little more quickly than you'd like, but it will always come back. It does not require potions and it is a phenomenal stat to use. And that's where a lot of this build comes into play. Now, I guess I'll start with my character level first. I've been playing a lot, okay? So I don't expect your numbers to look like my numbers and I don't expect any two builds should be the same. I just wanted to put this kind of guide or at least my spin on Elden Ring out there in the universe to show other players that there are other more kind of cautious ways of playing but still having fun. Uh, this particular build that I'm, I'm currently working on, very high defensive build, very high um, ability to kind of tank shots. I'm playing with a friend who I'm grinding through the base game right now. And I am able to basically stand in front of any boss and hold down block and allow him to poke from behind. And it's great. And I love it. And yes, I said poke from behind. Um, what I love though is that the way that this build comes together is very naturally. And you'll find that every time you level, you are getting more value until you hit that cap of 60, particularly with endurance. You're gonna find that anything after that doesn't really help, but you only have to focus on three stats, vigor, endurance, and strength. And that's it. Now, if you wanna get cute with a weapon, you may need a little more dexterity, or if you wanna run Rivers of Blood, which is still a very popular katana, you're obviously gonna need a bit more arcane, but you could totally ignore intelligence, you can totally ignore faith, you can totally ignore mind. Those stats were when I started the character, way back when, before I even knew what I wanted to be, I think I picked the samurai dude, because I like the armor, and that's kinda of how all that started. But I wanna go over the equipment with you guys, and then we'll talk a little bit through the play style. As far as the equipment goes, like I said, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to go run out and get the grafted blade, great sword, and level it up 10 levels for this build to work. It works well for me. What you're focusing on on this build is a high attribute scaling of strength. This is a B strength scaling. There are probably weapons that have done it better in the DLC. I honestly haven't looked, but I haven't had to look. I'm still progressing through the DLC at a very, very great pace. I'm not dying very often, if at all. Usually it's my own mistake for being a bit too greedy because this build just works with the fact that as you continue to level up those stats, you're gonna find that overall you're gonna be much more effective on the battlefield. The reason why I want you to select a big heavy weapon is this build is going to focus almost exclusively on guard countering. You're not going to be the aggressor, you're going to be the defender, and then you're gonna punish enemies every single time for them taking a shot at you. So when you're looking at a, a, an armament to kind of figure out what you want it to be, I recommend something that does the absolute most possible damage in a single swing. 
Now, this does mean ultimately that when you are running around and swinging, your swing is going to be slow. Very, very, very slow. That's why you want to punish. That's why you want to make sure when you are looking at this build, you're thinking of that. You're not gonna be poking enemies, you're gonna be playing slowly. With this shield, you don't have to get the fingerprint stone shield and level it up to 25. What you need to find is a shield that has 100% physical guarded damage negation. That is the most important stat. And there are a ton of other shields that will pull this off. You can see as I'm cycling through them now, I'm just looking through random shields. If they are not 100, you don't want the shield. The reason why you want a shield with 100 physical damage is that means you will always be able to tank any physical shot. The drawback is going to be, and I have quite a bit, I'm looking through all of them, this is a lot. There's more shields out there, right? Um, the drawback is going to be your physical fire, I'm sorry, your magic, fire, lightning, and holy will not be 100%, which means you will take damage if an enemy casts a spell on you and you turtle up. You're gonna take damage. But what this build allows you to do is focus on those attacks and learn those patterns against enemies such that when you're fighting, you're only worried about the physical piece. And as long as you can avoid that, you will punish. When they start to do any kind of magic, you roll away and you learn that um, enemy's attack. And it works very, very effectively. All the other armor you see that I have here is really preference. I am playing in a medium load. I want to have the most possible armor. So in the event I do get hit, it is the least amount of damage negation possible. And this is totally up to you in terms of what you like. And I often switch my build because I like trying on different pieces and looking differently. For me, this look looks cool. I like having the big cape. I like having the really, really expansive greaves. And I like having a kind of odd looking helmet. But it's totally up to you on what you want this to be. I encourage you to stick with a medium load, so don't go into the fat roll. I know there's been a lot of talk online lately about how the fat roll may somehow increase iframes. I do not think that's true. I think that's just random dumb luck. Use all your stats to your advantage. And the nice thing is when you do level up your character and you do upgrade every point of endurance will increase your equipment load as well. So you're gonna be able to get more and more stuff as you continue to increase the best stat in the game, stamina. So as your stamina goes up, your equipment load will go up, continue to play with different pieces of gear, look if it makes sense to pick a little heavier armor, maybe at the sacrifice of some gauntlets or some greaves, you're gonna get most of your heavy lifting stats from most likely your chest armor and your legs, because that's kind of like the biggest part of your body. But play around with that and see what build works best for you Try to keep your resistances as high as you can and obviously always look for the best possible value you can get. Always be at a medium load, always don't go in a fat roll and look for stuff like that. And as you find more and, and you find a piece of gear that you're like, oh, like I really, really wanna wear the uh, Omen helmet. I think it looks so, so cool. Well, you notice if I do that, it's gonna put me at heavy load. That's okay. If that's the piece you want, then just go and tweak the other lesser important pieces. Go back and look at your gauntlets and you could probably find some really, really lightweight gauntlets. They're not as great, but if that's the aesthetic you're going for, that's fine. Just make sure you're always keeping an eye on that and as you level up, continue. Now, when it comes to talismans, again, I have some recommended ones I think you should use, but a lot of them work depending on the situation you're playing. If there's any single one talisman you take, make sure it's the curved sword talisman. And the reason why is the curved sword talisman will increase your guard counter. What's a guard counter? It is your primary offense in the game. This is what's going to give you the most possible damage. That said, there are many, many, many times when I am playing and I will actually swap out for a gold scarab when I'm doing gold runs or if I'm playing online with my friends, I will take out uh, the, the woe here, which allows me to take more aggression, which allows me to hit to get hit more so my friend can kind of sneak around and do what he needs to do. 
The rest of these are designed for my particular play style. I want the most physical negation I could get. I want the most magic negation I could get and I want to be able to recover stamina quickly. There are a lot of items that do something similar to this in the world. There is a lot of items in the DLC that do this even better than in the base game. But to me, these are the things you wanna look for. There are other things that could be useful as well, I think for you, if you're looking um, to, to kind of, as you're working through the build. And a lot of them relate to um, boosting various immunities, like if you're fighting a specific boss or allowing you to um, carry more weight, which is great if you're like really close to a piece of gear that you really, really want to use and you're just not quite there. Those are really, really good too. Um, there's also ones that um, depending on the particular weapon you have, um, you may want to use a weapon that has like a fire imbuement where you can use a scorpion charm, for example, which will help out with that or um, some of these other more situational things, like if you're farming and you're, you, you keep getting pinged by enemies and you're, you're kind of learning patterns, Taker's cameo is great as you're walking around and leveling. I don't wanna sit here and tell you like, you must use this particular piece of gear because that is not the case. But you understand the core and I'm gonna show you the combat in a second. I think it's gonna place it all together. Lastly, when it comes to flasks, you don't need mana in this build at all. You're very rarely gonna use it unless your particular weapon has some sort of weapon art that you just feel like you absolutely need to have. The Grafted Greatsword actually does come with one. I don't use it very often, but it's there if I need it, which is why you're gonna always carry the maximum amount of Crimson Tear flasks possible. In terms of your Flask of Wondrous Physic, your mileage will vary depending on what uh, additional elements you have learned so far. I like to go with ones that give me more stamina and that allow me to recover more HP. And the reason why is if I'm needing more stamina and more HP, it means I'm probably fighting an enemy who's attacking me much faster than I can currently like hold the wall, as I like to say, and I'm holding up my shield. So something like a Green Burst Crystal Tear is really, really good because that tier is going to allow you to get your stamina back a lot more quickly. Um, so keep that in mind. And then I always carry a lantern because this game is just so damn dark half the time. I'm always turning on my lantern to see, which I'm actually gonna turn on right now. So let's just look at the very, very, very basic style of combat here. Um, I don't wanna give too much away the game. I picked an earlier area of the game, so this shouldn't really give you away like too much in terms of like what's happening here. Again, I have the medium roll, which is great, so I can get out of the way quickly if I need to. What I typically do is I target enemies, I look around and see how many opponents I have. If I can get them in a line, that is preferred for me. If I can get them kind of walking in a line, that's great because when I hit an attack, there's a very high likelihood I'm gonna hit more than one at a time. But if not, at least be mindful of your surroundings before picking an engagement. This is particularly important in areas that you don't know. It's perfectly fine to walk around with your shield out in front of you as your safety net and constantly spamming the R3 trigger to see if you can target anything. And that is totally acceptable and that is a very, very common way of how I like to play. So I'm gonna walk over and I'm gonna go ahead and try to trigger this guy to see if he comes over and hits. And as you can see, I did take the ever smallest amount of damage because again, this build does not defend against um, anything that's not physical. But physical, I could stand here forever and I will never ever get hurt. And as you can see, he has a slow attack speed. I am clearly way overpowered for this encounter. But you can see my stamina is just recovering on its own and I'm not doing anything. And when I feel comfortable and I'm ready to engage, I'm gonna a counter attack with my heavy attack. And you're gonna hear that special ching noise, which means you've done it right. So we're gonna go ahead and let him hit me one more time, hit with the heavy and I counter. And that is going to be the primary way you're going to engage with enemies. You lock on, you walk forward, you hold the shield down, you make sure that in case there's some other enemy around you or some other um, ranged attack you're defending against. You do notice, like I said, my health is down. That's because I took two fire shots. This is not a 100% magic build. 
So there are weaknesses to this build, but I can infinitely hold the line. And when I'm ready, heavy attack, counter. And as soon as, now this, these guys are gonna die quickly and I don't wanna go too far. Like I said, I don't wanna ruin the experience for you guys. This is a gorgeous game and there's so much to see and do out in the world out there. So I don't wanna to give too much away in terms of like what's around the next corner, is the giant dragon gonna sweep down? I think that exploration is best by best explored by you. And there are people who do much more detailed playthroughs and much more detailed uh, guides than I ever will. So I'm not gonna to try to like sneak that stuff into you, but the general gist of it is to hold your shield out, Look for an enemy and engage. I know there's a knight down here and he's gonna be a little bit tougher. I wanna show you him and then I'll wrap up this video. But all engagements will go this way. I'm gonna hold my shield out. Now he's probably gonna do some sort of magic attack. Looks like his shield is imbued. We'll see if I actually take a little bit of physical damage here. Uh, and I do, you could see just the ever small, just watch my health bar. When he hits me with his blue sword, it's ever such a small amount. So again, something like the Taker's Cameo would be really good. There's also that one stick that slowly regenerates your HP um, in combat. So if you wanted to do that. Now, obviously I couldn't stay like this forever. He will eventually whittle me down. But any shield that has 100 physical, he's not gonna be focusing on your precious health resource. He's gonna be focusing on your stamina and your stamina always comes back. So after the next hit, I'm gonna let him hit one more time and then I'm gonna counter with a counter with a heavy attack. And immediately, as I am hitting R2, you can't see my fingers. As I am hitting R2, I'm immediately holding down L1 so that immediately my shield comes right back up because I don't want to take damage. I want to block, I want to heavy attack counter and then immediately block. I want that shield to come up as fast as possible. And as long as that shield has the 100% physical against it, you are going to hold the line very, very effectively. Now, the last thing I'll mention as I wrap up this video, the weapon arts. I know a lot of people love weapon arts. There are great weapon arts you can put on your shield. There are great weapon arts you can put on your weapons, assuming you didn't pick a legendary weapon like I did that has one kind of baked in. I would recommend you picking the no skill weapon art for your shield. I don't want you to get cute with offense and think there's the shield one where you run in and you're kind of holding your shield with two hands in front of you. I don't want you to think about that. I want you to focus on using the shield solely as a method to secure a battle space and solely as a method to get ready for the counter and let your counter do the damage. This build does not require you to focus on FP. This build does not require you to focus on really anything other than holding your shield and hitting back with heavy bombs. And I can tell you that as I've just gone through some of the very, very difficult end game DLC bosses, again, I am very high leveled, but even as I played through the core experience, this build did wonders for me and I had an absolute blast with it. And I wasn't worried about trying to cast these really goofy spells and swapping between my scepter and my, um, you know, trying to swap through abilities quickly while I'm rolling around and like, oh gosh, I don't wanna get hit. I didn't have to do any of that. I walked in, I locked onto an enemy and I walked him down and I did it time and time and time again and I had a blast with it. I hope this helps you. And like I said, there are a lot of sword and board builds out there, but I wanted to really go into depth on kind of why this works. And I wanted to go in a little more in depth and what I expect you guys to do in combat. So if you've, if you've tried this build, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about it. If there are other G flashbang builds, of course you're gonna find them. You're gonna see something online and wanna try it, but the survivability of this alone will keep you going for such a long time. You will be able to tank bosses. You will be able to tank some of the area bosses. You will be able to join your friends and help them defeat things. You can take on the role of a defender and be summoned to other people's games to help them defend against uh, the reds, so to speak. And when people see me walking them down, I just know that they have fear. Yes, they can get cute and do lots of rolls around and try to backstab you, but if you keep the Z targeting on and walk enemies down, you are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And as we would say, I think this build is absolutely wonderful. I hope you guys found this video informative and interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.